Now let's talk about limiting reactants in everyday life. And uh, the first example I'd like to give is air to fuel ratios in combustion. And what I'm showing here on the left is what's commonly called a Bunsen burner. Something that you should get to use in your general chemistry classes. Now, um, this Bunsen burner has a flame but before there's a flame, you can see that there's gas coming in here. And that gas, let's zoom in a little bit on this, is usually uh, methane, CH4. And then it's also got air coming in here. And you can see the air is represented as the uh, red arrow. And the gas is represented as the blue arrow. And they're mixing as they come up here. And by uh, using the gas valve, you can control the amount of gas. And by turning this this way, you can control the how much air is getting into to the uh, Bunsen burner because these holes, you can partially close them if you want. And so what you've got for a Bunsen burner, the reaction you're looking at is CH4. It's combustion plus O2 gas and you might as well balance this this is going to be two moles of oxygen goes to one mole of carbon dioxide and two moles of h2o and that's the gas and so you can uh, choose how much methane how much gas and how much oxygen gets in and if you do you actually get differently colored flames where these are one two three four flames in a dark room, the colors of the flames are different and the sizes, as you can see, too. In this first one, the limiting reactant, oh, let's back up a little bit. The limiting reactant is oxygen. And uh, this flame, actually, if the limiting reactant is oxygen, then that means that you're going to have some leftover CH4, and that often comes off of a flame like this as soot or sort of a black carbony type stuff. And you'll also notice that uh, this color of flame uh, actually looks like what most parts of a campfire looks like as well. And that's because oxygen is limiting and you've got ash coming off of it as well. And then we're increasing the oxygen, increasing the oxygen, until here, the limiting reactant is uh, methane, CH4. And it turns out that uh, this is the hottest flame. And actually, now we will zoom in again. In this flame, there's an outer, uh, actually there's a bigger picture here too, but there's an outer blue, light blue, and then there's an inner blue cone, what's called the inner blue cone. And that's on the picture over there as well. But right at the tip of the inner blue cone, right there, if you can see it, is the hottest part of the flame. Uh, so, and, but uh, our point in showing this to you is that you can, you can control, you can do an example of limiting reactants and you can see the effects of which one is the limiting reactant by the flame color. Now, a more biology example is this one. So aerobic and anaerobic respiration. Uh, respiration is going to be how our body turns what can be represented here as glucose. When it reacts with oxygen, turns into carbon dioxide and H2O. And I will tell you, this is the chemistry version of this process in your body. This takes many steps and you are, can study those in your biology classes. But what we do know is that when oxygen is present in vast excess, this is its aerobic uh, respiration that occurs. And that when there's insufficient oxygen, you actually, so there's no oxygen here. The glucose still reacts, and it reacts in a different pathway, a different reaction entirely, because there's insufficient oxygen. And this is what's called lactic acid. 
And if you've ever worked out extremely rigorously, you can get to a position in your muscles where there's you're burning the glucose faster than and so so fast that there's no oxygen there in your muscles and that can lead to buildup of lactic acid and uh, burning muscles. Or so I hear. Um, now, uh, so that is just one case where um, limiting reactants actually affect uh, how you work out, how your, you, uh, your daily life goes.